the Damon Runyon Theater. Once again, the Damon Runyon Theater brings you another story by the master storyteller, Damon Runyon, and this one, Tight Shoes. And to tell it to you, here is Broadway. Thanks. All this begins because Rupert Salsinger is a very conscientious character. I remember that it starts of an evening in Bilby's Shoe Store, which is on Broadway near Mindy's. Things are quiet until in walks Corky Lambert and three of his boys. For a second, Corky just stands there looking around. Then he yells, That's the guy, boys! Toss him around a little. Break him apart. Hey, wait a minute. What did I do? Mr. Lambert. Mr. Lambert, what is it? What's wrong? Bilby, look at my feet. Why, you're not wearing shoes. Shoes? Here, look. That lame brain clerk of yours showed me these this morning before I go to the track. Look at him. But, but I don't see anything wrong with him. Look, I'll talk to you later after my boys wreck your clerk and your store. Please, please, tell me what's wrong. Well, Mr. Bilby, I, I, I sold him what he asked for. You sell me tight shoes. They kill me. I get to the track and my feet hurt. And what happens? It takes my mind off the horses and I drop a grand. I tell you, I sold you eight and a half the size you asked for. Then my feet hurt me so bad I have a few harsh words with my darling. She bangs me over the head with a hard object. Look, Mr. Lambert, I'll fix it up. I'll exchange the shoes. I'll, I'll fire this, this nitwit of a clerk. Uh, you will? Yes, yes, I promise. Only please don't wreck my store. Uh, I got nothing against you, Bilby. When you sell me shoes, they fit. But these... Oh, I swear, you asked for eight and a half. Look inside. That's the size of those shoes. Shut up. Mr. Lambert, I assure you, look, take any pair in the place, three, take ten pairs. All I want is that this clerk should be flattened. I'll fire him right away now, please. I... Okay, Bilby. But if I come in here again and see that kiss of his, so help me, I'll tear this place apart. Come on, boys. Let's go. Okay. You, you, you dope, you sap. Mr. Bilby, I sold him eight and a half like he asked for. He takes a size 11. The... Then why did he ask... Put elevens on his feet and tell him they're eight and a half. Well, how was I to know that? You know it now, but it won't do you any good, because from now on, you don't work here. I... But the job, I need it, Mr. Get out. Get out. And if you so much as pass here on the other side of the street, I'll shoot you. <laughs> So Rupert Salsinger is out of a job because of a pair of tight shoes. And that's not the whole thing, which ends up very strange indeed. And what the events are that follow, I will tell you in a minute. And now, back to the Damon Runyon Theater and the famous story... Tight shoes. Well, Rupert is out of a job. He takes it hard because he is in love with a doll named Minnie Schultz and wishes to marry her. So he is very low indeed and walks around until dark. He takes a good look at the East River but changes his mind because it is very muddy and he has got on his best suit. Then... He drops in a little place, and the scene is as follows. The injustice of it. The terrible injustice. Hmm? Were you speaking to me? No, no, I wasn't. Oh, I, I thought you were. I was talking to myself. Oh. Would you like to talk to me? Who are you? Well, you look sad. I am. I may kill myself. Do you think it will help things? This world is full of injustice. Frightful, unfair injustice. Is it? Oh, but what would you know about that? You. Hmm, I can learn. Huh. I can see you know nothing about injustice. Have you ever been sued? What's that got to do with it? I have. Dozens of times. Sometimes I think it's a career. Ah. Oh, go away from me. Leave me die in peace. Well, I'm only trying to help. Help? You? Huh. Look at you. Expensive clothes, full dress. Well, how do you know I'm not advertising something? Your shirt front doesn't light up. Oh, should it? Look, look, I don't know who you are, but I don't like you. Why not? I can tell from looking at you that you never worked in your life. Well, come to think of it, I haven't. Yeah, there you are. So what would the loss of a job mean to you? Nothing. What would losing the chance to marry the girl you love mean to you? Nothing. Go away. You interest me. Oh, who are you anyway? My name is Calvin Colby. Oh. Oh, I thought so. Playboy. 
strictly a hurrah Henry. I feel sorry for you. You look so sad. I, I don't like to see people sad. That's just talk. Talk. Someday people of your class will find out what it means to be the butt of injustice. Once the barricades are up, look out. Look, Mr. Uh, Mr. Salsinger, uh, Rupert Salsinger. Remember that name, buddy, because someday it will be a flaming torch of liberty. Well, you can't get lighted up on a soft drink. Uh, look, I'm very interested in all this. Why not tell me about it? What for? Well, I don't know. It just sounds like a good idea. Besides, the idea of barricades in New York intrigues me. Oh, dilettante. Typical of your class. I'm a good listener. What do you say, Rupert? Mr. Salsinger? All right. Mr. Salsinger. Begin at the beginning. Now, although this Calvin Colby is strictly a hurrah Henry like Rupert says, he is nevertheless a nice guy. So, Rupert tells him the story. And when he finishes, Calvin says, Ropey, that is undoubtedly the saddest story I've ever heard. Not only that, but I... I'll lose many. Yes. Yes, you'll lose many. Oh, the bitter injustice. Cal, what will I do? Rupee? Rupee will do something. Minnie is so wonderful. Have you got a girl? Oh, lots of them. But they all turn out to be plaintiffs. Then you are the victim of injustice, too. You are the victim of this... this... I certainly am. We should rise against the injustice. Carry a sort of liberty down Broadway. Make it Fifth Avenue. I live up that way. Cal. What, Rupee? What can I do? Minnie's father wants her to marry Gus Schmelk. Who's Gus Schmelk? He owns a drugstore. Capitalist. Exactly. Let's go throw some barricades at him. Yeah. Oh, but you're all dressed up. You had some place to go. Oh. Oh, yes, I, I forgot now. But even if I could remember, you'd come first. Mm -hmm. We must right this wrong. We must carry something or other down Broadway. Hey, Rupi, what do you suggest? We'll fling our challenge at the world. Wonderful. Let's go fling some challenges. So Rupert and Calvin start walking. Nobody pays any attention to their challenges, although several gendarmes give them the eye. But as it does not seem a good idea to fling challenges at cops... Calvin and Rupert find themselves uptown, where the scene is as follows. I want you to know that... Rupi, hmm? where are we? This looks like Columbus Circle to me. Oh? Mm. This looks like a nice place to start our campaign. All right, let's begin. Oh, wait a minute, Rupi. Look. What? Do I see men standing on boxes? Yeah. Yeah. Good. I thought for a moment I was ill. Hey, why are they standing on boxes? Well, they are making speeches. Well, what about? Injustice. Well, there's too many of them. Look, two, three, five of them. They're too scattered. What they need is the centralization of ideas. They need the strong guiding hand of, a, of an organizer. One man to speak for them all. You are absolutely right. And my father always says organization is the greatest thing in the world. You must meet my father someday. I, and my mother. They're my parents. <laughs> you go in, Don't let it worry you. Rupert? Rupert, I have a wonderful idea. G g g get me a soapbox. Why, why? I'll why? tell the world about the great wrong done to you. I'll, uh, here, help mm. me up on this bench. Oh, wonderful. One, up you go. Yeah, that's up it. you go. Mm. Now, now we'll go to work. Here you are, ladies and gentlemen. Here you are. Step this way. I have something to say. Rupert, Rupert, drum up some business. Oh, sure. sure. People! Comrades! Here's your leader. Step up and listen to him. Hey, what are we giving away? Nothing. Step up. Step up. Step up. Step up. Listen to the truth. I speak against the injustice of the world. I speak of my friend here, this downtrodden man who, because he needed a pair of shoes, was thrown out of a job and cast from society. Here, here. What? Here, here. Oh. Never in my life have I been so disturbed by such a wrong. Look at my friend. He has no shoes. And what's he got on his feet? I'm glad you asked that, friend. What has he got on his feet? Shackles. He has given the best years of his life to his employer. 
Now that employer thrown him aside like an old shoe. Oh. Yes, an old shoe. Here, here. Oh, Thank you. Now what shall we do to right this wrong? I say on to Bilby's shoe store. On to Bilby's. On to Bilby's, the symbol of man's inhumanity to man. So Calvin steps off the bench and starts to walk. Now a guy in full dress who wants to march on a shoe store is a curiosity even in New York. So the citizens around there who have got nothing better to do line up behind Calvin and Rupert and the parade starts. At first there are only a few, but before they get two blocks this increases to several hundred. They are almost to Bilby's and by now Calvin Colby forgets what this is all about and says to Rupert, Rupert, there's something I don't understand. What is it, comrade? I remember starting out earlier with you, but I, I seem to have gotten mixed up in the, in the parade. Is it St. Patrick's Day? No, we are marching to Bilby's. Uh, what's that? The shoe store. Oh. Why? To right a wrong. Oh. The cry is forward. On to Bilby's. Uh, uh, there, there it is. There it is. Ah! Halt, friends! Halt, halt! Friends, we are here. This is the place. Look at it. Look at its bloated owner standing in front. His iniquitous and sordid mart open even at night to suck the blood from his slaves. Forward! Oh, so singer, what is this? What the devil? I have come back, Mr. Bilby. So this is Bilby. Who are you? What are these people doing here? Bilby, the hour has struck. Well, look, whatever this is, cut it out. You get away from here and take Insult your... Insult to injury, friends. Follow me. Follow us. Stop it. Get away. Go back. You'll wreck the store. Shoes. Shoes. The symbols of slavery. Destroy them. No. No. Get away from those cells. Police. Help. Murder. Police. The Bastille has fallen. My shoes. My stock. My store. Fire. Murder. Police. Help. Run, you coward. Ruben. What is it, comrade? I'm sleepy. <laughs> Well, the citizens in the parade see their chance to get some shoes, and they take it. It is not five minutes before Bilby's store is wrecked, but everybody has a pair of shoes. Some of the shoes get all mixed up. In fact, for weeks afterward, parties are running around Broadway trying to match up odd shoes. The fun is finally stopped by the Gentiles. And what happens later, I will tell you in a minute. Now, back to the Damon Runyon Theater and the famous story, Tight Shoes. Like I say, the gendarmes break up the festivities and Rupert and Calvin are bounced in the clink. But it seems that Calvin's father has quite a few shekels and some influence and springs them. Then it comes up the next morning in Calvin's apartment. All right. All right, all right. Uh, oh, oh, hello, Dad. Hello, Dad. Calvin, this is the last straw. I put up with your nonsense and playboy tactics for the last time. Why, what did I do? Do? Have you read the papers? Well, I will as soon as I can focus my eyes. Why? 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 I waded through a hundred reporters in the lobby downstairs, grabbing my coat, asking me for a statement on... on social justice. Oh? What social justice? Do you know what you did last night? Vaguely. Your mother has had to leave for the Catskills, and she hates the Catskills. Well, I'm sorry, Dad, but Look I don't here. know... It says, strange as it may seem, one of the town's most glamorous playboys, Calvin Colby, ended up last night in a new role, that of a thinker. Calvin, what the devil do you mean by becoming a thinker? Please, Dad, I, I guess I... Well, I... This I... is the last straw. Hello. Who in the name... Who is that? morning. Oh, that's Rupert Salsinger. Oh, your friend of last night. Oh, I feel awful. Rupert, this is father. Dad, huh? this is Rupert Salsinger. You, you radical. Me? Yes, you. Now, look here, Dad, don't blame Rupert. I, I guess it was my fault. Listen, you think of something to say to those reporters downstairs before you, before you do anything else. Do you hear me? Uh, yes, sir, I hear you. All right. If you have any regard at all for your mother, you'll do something to get her out of the Catskills. Whew. Oh, I'm sorry. 
sick. Listen, Rupert, uh, talk to the reporters. Me? What will I say? Anything. Oh, I wonder what Minnie will say. Uh, who's Minnie? I told you, my girl. Oh. Well, Cal, your father hates me. My father hates me. Hey, listen. Listen, I got an idea. No, 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 I will not march again. No, 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 listen. You, you fix it up with me for Minnie, and I'll talk to the reporters. That's a deal. Where do I, uh, where do I find Minnie? Uh, uh, here, I'll write, it, I'll write down the address. Her father owns a delicatessen on 2nd Avenue. And, and please, Cal, hurry, because after all this, she's liable to marry Gush Milk. <laughs> Yes, sir. May I help you? Uh, what? May I help you? Oh. Is something wrong? Oh, no. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm looking for Minnie Schultz. Uh, that's me. You? You're... Oh, no. Oh, yes. Uh, what do you want? Who are you? Uh, are you sure you're Minnie Schultz? Yes. <laughs> what are you staring at? I... Oh, I'm sorry. My name's Colby, Calvin Colby. You're Calvin Colby? Oh, I think so. I I came to tell you that Rupert is all right. Oh, Mr. Colby, that was a wonderful thing you did last night. What? Uh, wait till I come around the counter. The rest of you matches. What? Uh, nothing, nothing, but... Will you swear you're Minnie Schultz? Is there anything wrong? Wrong? Nothing that five million more of you wouldn't cure. What? Uh, uh, Rupert's all right. Oh, he's with you? Uh, at my apartment. Oh. Well, that's what I came to tell you. I, I guess I'll be going now. Oh, wait. Yes? I, I read all about it in the papers. It was wonderful for a man like you, with, with all your money and position to fight for Rupert and other people. But you see, I, well, I really didn't do anything. I, I was... Oh, and uh, you're modest. Modest? Well, most people in your position wouldn't even look twice at Rupert. They wouldn't care. But you, you actually... What was wonderful. You really think so? Yes. Yes, I do. Uh, how is Gus Schmelk? Why? Just thought I'd ask. Are you going ahead with your work? My work? Well, you're not going to stop now. Why, everyone's talking about you. How you changed overnight from being a... a Playboy? A, yes, into a wonderful person. Uh, look, Miss Schultz, I... Please, have... call me Minnie. Yes, Minnie. Well, look, I have to tell you that... Yes? Oh, what are you going to tell me? You really think it was wonderful? Splendid. And you think I'm wonderful, too? I... <sighs> you say Rupert's all right? Just fine. Well, why didn't he come to see me? Well, he had to talk to some reporters. Oh. So I came instead. I'm glad you did. You are? Why? I... Did you want anything else, Mr. Colby? Calvin. Calvin. We... We have some nice bologna. A dollar's worth. That's a lot. Make it five dollars worth. Why? Are you giving a party? Oh, no. It'll take you longer to slice that much. Well, one hour and $75 worth of delicatessen stuff later, Calvin Colby leaves Minnie Schultz, and he has got a look in his eyes. It takes him five hours to get back to his apartment, because he walks around in circles that keep taking him past the delicatessen. But he finally gets there, and the scene is as follows. Calvin, Calvin, my boy, I've been waiting for you. Oh, hello, Minnie. Minnie? Calvin, what's the matter with you? Oh, Dad. What have you got there? What is all this stuff? She sold it to me. She sliced that bologna with her own hands. Listen to me. Calvin! Uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry, Dad. What did you say? My boy, I'm proud of you. I thought last night's escapade was another of your harem scarum stunts. But, but this, this... Listen to this. The statement you gave the reporters this morning. I gave? What statement? Calvin, are you... No, Dad. Well, listen to this. It behooves each of us in this age of mad commercialism to give a thought to his neighbor. It is our privilege as human beings, nay, our duty as human beings, to reach out and give the other fellow a helping hand. Justice must triumph. Oh, Calvin, your mother is coming home from the Catskills. Dad, let me see that paper. But this... Rupert, 
Lopez! I'm proud of you, my boy. I must admit that for the first 25 years, you kept us guessing, but now... Uh -oh. Keep up the good work, son, and I'll do everything I can to help you. Goodbye, son. Lopez, are you here? Oh, were you calling me, Calvin? Look, what did you tell those reporters? I... Uh... I was carried away. You weren't, but you will be. Why, you made me the biggest phony that ever came down the pike. I'll be the laughing... Oh, so you want me to answer that? I don't care. Colby, you Colby? No, 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 that, that's him. Oh, Colby, my name's O'Hara. Oh, how are you? Proposition for you, Colby. Great stuff in the papers. My name's O'Hara, Six Ward. O'Hara, Six Ward. Who are you? Rupert Salsinger. What will they think of next? Well, Colby, what do you say? Say? Say what to what? Run for Congress. Social justice ticket. We need a man. You're it. What? Me? Why, you're crazy. Strike while the iron is hot. You're a cinch. You'll get votes. Now, wait a minute, O'Hara. No I don't time. Know... Got to get an answer now. Take it back to the big boy. I... Oh, look, take him. Him? Why? Well, he's your man. The little man wronged by society. He'll get more votes than I could. Mm, maybe. Me? Me run for Congress? Either one of you makes no difference. We got to have a man who's going to win. Toss a coin. I step aside for my friend and colleague, Rupert Salsinger. What do you say, Salsinger? Yes, yes, I'll run. I shall step into the legislative halls of our nation with the true spirit of democratic ideals spurring me on. My every effort will be bent toward making... Just save it. We'll tell you what to say, when to say it. See you later, Congressman. <laughs> Yes, sir, may I be... Oh, hello. Hello, Minnie. How are you, Calvin? Oh, fine. How's Rupert? Oh, he's busy, but he, he said to tell you he'll be down to see you the first chance he gets. Oh, I haven't seen him in two weeks. Well, Minnie, you know how it is, one thing and another. Uh-huh, I know how it is. But I'm sure that when he gets straightened around, he'll... Well, he thinks about you a lot. Sure. You love him, Minnie? I promised him I'd wait for him until he got a good job. He never did have much. I always felt sorry for him. I see. Minnie. What? I... Nothing. Uh, what were you going to say? Nothing, honestly. Oh. <laughs> Looks like it's going to rain. Uh-huh. Looks like a storm. With lightning and thunder. Uh-huh. Uh, Minnie, there's something I have to tell you uh, about me. That night when I... What? You thought I did a wonderful thing. Oh, it was. And you thought I was wonderful. I still do. Okay. Well, I, I guess I'll be going. I've got some things to do, and it's hard to get a cab when it rains. Well, say hello to Rupert for me, will you? Well, sure. Uh, see you later. Well, that is that. It seems Minnie will not tell Calvin that she is in love with him, and he will not tell her because of Rupert. Anyway, he gets back to his apartment, where Rupert is still staying, and the scene is as follows. Oh, Cal, I'm so glad you're back. Why, what's the matter? Minnie phoned. She said she won't wait any longer. She won't? No. Uh, I mean, she won't? She'll give me a half hour to get down there, Calvin. I gotta get dressed. Help me. Well, sure. I'll never get a cab in this weather. Well, take the subway to Second Avenue. Walk over from there. Yeah. Oh, my shoes. Where are my shoes? Oh, where did you take them off? No... I remember now. I sent them out to be fixed. Calvin, I haven't got any shoes. I can't go out without shoes. Well, send for some. Sh sh sure, Bilby's. Get Bilby's. Tell him to get a pair of shoes up here right away. I only got half an hour. So they send for some shoes, and Rupert flies out to get the minis. Calvin waits in the apartment. A half hour goes by, then an hour. By this time, Calvin knows that any chance he has got is gone when something happens. Hello? Rupert? Minnie, is that you? Yes, Calvin? Yes, what's the matter? Uh, he didn't come, Calvin, he didn't come. He didn't love me after all. I waited for him for three years and he couldn't get here in a half hour. Well, look, does that, does that mean you, I, I mean Minnie, listen, uh, will you wait any longer? No, no, I won't. Uh, Minnie, I love you. You, you love me? Yes, ever since I first saw you. <laughs> Oh, Minnie, never mind that. Now I'll explain later. Listen, I'll be right down there. Oh, oh, I love you. I'll wait. How long? Until you get here. Listen, Minnie, if Rupert gets there first, kill him. Well, Rupert does not get there, but Calvin does. And he is very happy now, married to Minnie, and managing the Schultz Colby chain of delicatessen stores. Rupert is a congressman and marries a wealthy widow. However, I often wonder why he does not get to Minnie's on time. Well, I find out later. And what the payoff is, I will tell you in a minute. Like 
I say, I often wonder why it is Rupert does not get to Minnie's in time. I find out one day when I go into Bilby's shoe store to buy myself a pair of kicks. Old man Bilby puts a pair on my feet and says, There. How's that, Broadway? Mm, they are a little big, I think. You take eight and a half. These are eight and a half. You should have a little room at the toes. There's nothing worse than tight shoes. Yeah, I guess you are right. I will take these. No, sir, nothing worse than tight shoes. <laughs> For some people. Huh? For some people? I remember the time I saw a man sitting on the curbstone in agony because he couldn't walk. <laughs> he was in a hurry to get someplace, too. Oh? Who is that? I got even with him for wrecking my store. Wait a minute. Do you by any chance mean Congressman Rupert Salsinger? I sure do. <laughs> he had to have a pair of shoes fast once, so I sent him a pair. Took them up myself. They felt all right at first, but after you walk a block and a pair of shoes a size too small, well, <laughs> yes, sir, he walked as far as he could, then couldn't take another step. Yep, ain't nothing worse than tight shoes. And so ends the famous Damon Runyon story, Tight Shoes. Listen in again next week for... The Damon Runyon Theater. The Damon Runyon Theater with John Brown as Broadway is directed by Richard Sandville and the story is adapted for radio by Russell Hughes. Vern Carstensen is in charge of production. This is a Mayfair production. Thank <laughs> you.